Hey everyone, welcome back to Elemental Cartomancy. Um, you've probably seen by the title that I'm doing 54321 Tarot. This is a tag by Kelly Bear. I shall link her original video in the description. I was tagged to do this by Simon a fair while ago, well, when he did it, which was a fair while ago. Um, I've got this one bit of hair that keeps falling down bane of my life by the way um champagne problems there um yeah so simon tagged me to do this a while ago and this is me just getting around to do it um i'll link his video in the description as well okay here we go five is five tarot decks and kelly says you can basically pick a category if you want or it can just be five random decks you know it's up to you i have gone with the category of um tarot decks created by friends in the tarot community okay um i feel bad because i have had to kind of cut it down to five and also i've kept it to tarot decks so i do have some oracle decks that are made by friends in the community um but i've kept this to tarot because i even had more than five tarot decks um right table cam hello the first one is the open face tarot and this is the ghosted edition i believe this is called this is by robin at toadstool tarot this is a majors only deck i love the, the the white lines on the black background i love that it doesn't have titles um there's just something quite satisfying about that um and it you know for for the most part or you know it, for all of them it's it's quite easy to see what the cards are um so yeah open face tarot i, I don't want to um spend too i don't I, i'm going to try and make this video quick so um i don't want to spend too long laying out all the cards you know so yeah open face tarot by robin crutchfield from toadstool tarot available on mpc as far as I'm aware, that that was where I got it. Um, and as far as I'm aware, it's still available, but you would need to check. The next one is also from MPC, and this is the Zany Tarot by Zane at Tarot Talk and Witchery. So this is a deck that Zane created using Canva. Um, as I say mpc was what you used to kind of a print it uh, and this is the uh, one of the like an anniversary the, i think the first anniversary edition so this edition has these kind of a rocky horror backgrounds but definitely check out zane's um store on mpc because he's got other decks um i'm only mentioning one but uh, zane has as does robin um, they both have quite a few decks on NPC, so definitely check out their stores. The next one, um, we've got uh, Crystal Skull Tarot by Jesse Driscoll. Um, so this is a, it's photographic and it uses um, Crystal Skulls from Jesse's own collection. Um, done in the style of the RWS absolutely stunning deck jesse and i did a live a good few years ago now um where we i think it was like a three hour live and we went through all of the cards in detail it was one of the most enjoyable lives that i think i've done i, I love geeking out on tarot as you probably know um and to be able to kind of get in depth you know get right into the meat of a deck with the creator was was a treat um so definitely check out that video um so if you search crystal skull tarot then um you should be able to find it um so yep crystal skull tarot by jesse driscoll the next one so this is um my Dodal Tarot de Marseille, and this was so it was designed by um, it was printed by my good friend Justin from the channel Justin Michael. 
um, and it was designed by East Taro. It's upside down. Um, so this is an absolutely stunning deck. It's beautiful. Um, yeah, I, it's just uh, the way that Justin's kind of a uh, printed this. Uh, he's used like particular cardstock, you know, that's that's good for actually being used. That's good for riffle shuffling and all that kind of thing. Because he knows that I like to kind of uh, use the hell out of my deck. So really good quality cardstock. The images are beautiful. Um, yeah, amazing, amazing tarot deck. Um, and that just leaves one more. And this, just put that away. The last one is the beautiful Chakra Healing, Chakra Healing Tarot by uh, my good friend Malamir Logan. Um, Malamir is currently in the process of creating another deck. In fact, I tell a lie. Don't know why I'm saying that. Malamir has created another deck, and said deck is now available for pre-order. Um, and that is the Cat Aura Tarot. Um, it has been done by the same artist who has created the Chakra Healing Tarot. Um, so definitely check that out and check out check this out as well if you've not seen it. Um, so that's Malamir Logan. Um, her website is Acorn and Burdock, if I remember correctly. Um, where you are able to pre-order the Cat Aura Tarot and I think you can still get a copy of the um, Chakra Healing Tarot. So those are my five tarot decks. And as I say, these are all decks that will be made by, you know, friends in the tarot community. Okay, four. Four is four books. And the common theme here is they're all books by the amazing Rachel Pollock. Um, so the first book is called The Fisher King. I wouldn't say this is necessarily about tarot, but it definitely um, incorporates tarot into the, the story. Um, so yeah, and this is the only novel that's on my list. The second book is uh, Tarot the Open Labyrinth. This is one where Rachel goes through and explains readings that she's done for people. Um, so if you if you love to kind of uh, hear about the tarot and practice, if you love to hear about the tarot being used and how it's been used for specific actual live readings and reading, you know, how the cards have been interpreted and stuff like that, then this is definitely an amazing book to try and get your hands on. I think it's out of print. Um, I think I had to get it off eBay, but brilliant book definitely check it out um the next one is uh the book that has only recently come out or have recently been republished a walk through the forest of souls um and i've actually not read this book the, the actual physical book but i've listened to the audio book and there's another book that's very similar called soul forest that i have read um, but yeah, like I say, I've listened to the audiobook for this, I think, about twice now, and I love it. And that just leaves, finally, um, last but not least, 78 Degrees of Wisdom. And this book needs no introduction or description. This is, you know, a staple on any good tarot shelf, in my opinion. So those are the four books. Three is three spreads, so I'm going to grab a deck to demonstrate these with. And I'll grab the Chakra Healing Tarot. Um, okay, two of these spreads are going to be larger, and then the third one is going to be a smaller spread. The first one, I won't go into interpretations here, because uh, it will take too long. But the first one is from the um, the guidebook for the Raven's Prophecy Tarot. I always have to look round for some reason to remember what that deck is called. The guidebook for the Raven's Prophecy. This is kind of a Celtic Cross-esque, but it's not. It, it's different. Um, and I prefer it a lot to the Celtic Cross. So this is a really good spread if, you're, if you've got someone who's looking for advice on a particular topic. Okay, so 10 card spread, and I'm just going to run through the position meanings. I think I've actually done a video on this spread, 
So um, have a look at that uh, in my um, you know spreads playlist. So the first card is you know it's the querent or the situation. It's basically what's going on right now. The second card crosses it like this, and that is um, you know the kind of our obstacles, the stuff that the querent's got going on, and um, the stuff that they're interacting with. Uh, the third card. Now, I should um, say that I, when I use a tarot spread, I very rarely stick to all of the position meanings that are given. I normally kind of a uh, mess with them a wee bit. I usually bastardize them a bit, um, and this is no exception. So the third one uh, is for me conscious. Uh, so looking at the conscious mind. Fourth one, unconscious. The fifth card is what you think or what the querent thinks they should do or what they think is a good idea the sixth card one two three four five, yeah sixth is what the querent thinks they shouldn't do what they think is a bad idea seventh card is what the cards are telling the querent they should do so what what should they do versus what do they think they should do and then the eighth cards in a similar vein as what the cards are telling the querent they shouldn't do. So these four cards are really interesting to bounce off of each other. Okay. And then the last two are, you know, the kind of an immediate future card and then the final outcome card. So the spread kind of a generally looks like this. So that's the first spread. The second spread is another Big eight. It's a, this is an, I think this is 11 cards. Um, this is called, this is from the Witch's Wisdom Guide book, but again, I've kind of uh, made changes to it to suit myself. Um, I think this is called the Compass and Rose Spread in that guide book. So, again, similar vein with the first few cards. First card, usually the, like, the general situation or, you know, the querent. Um, the second card is the you know the opposition or what's going on and the stuff that they've got going on right now. Now I have kind of a the next one for me goes up here, um, and so we've got four corners and each of the four corners represents an element. So for me we do fire first and that uh, you know fire depends what kind of reading you're doing really. So fire could be the career. Um, it could be, you know, the a passion project that you're looking into for the person. Um, basically, anything that the element of fire represents to you, um, you use in this position. And it's the same with all the elements, really. Um, so this is like kind of a, the, the, the main fire position um, or, you know, like uh, what's going on. Say, say this is like career, you know, what's going on in the person's career. Um, air. What mentally, what's going on? What what what's going on in the person's mind? What are what's their mind on? What are they thinking about? Water, um, emotionally, what's this person got going on? And then earth. So you know, material world. What what's going on around about this person? Okay. So we then hit the four elements again, but the next four are advice cards. So advice in the element of fire. Okay. Advice in the element of air, um, emotional advice, material advice, and then the final card kind of across is this again, and that is the outcome card. So really handy spread, and it's quite dynamic because the elements are so dynamic; they can mean different things to different people. Um, so this is another favourite of mine. Final spread is probably the one that you see me using the most. This is a three card spread that I use, you know, more often than not, if you see me doing readings on YouTube, I'll be using this spread. Um, and this is the situation, advice and outcome spread. Usually nine times out of 10, if you're, you know, the kind of a questions that you ask, if you're looking for like kind of a quick answers, Either the you know all three cards together, or one of these positions will hit that question. So people might ask, uh, you know, what's coming up for me this weekend? Situation advice outcome. So you're looking mainly towards the outcome card because you're you know they're you know future casting. 
um, or someone might ask, you know, what advice have the cards got for me around my career situation, advice, outcome? You know, you've got some extra information, but mainly you're going to be hitting that advice card. So those are the three spreads that I use the most by far. I don't know why I'm putting that away, because the next category of the two is two tarot habits or paraphernalia. Now, I don't really, to me, the cards are the main thing and the only thing that I really use. You might see me put a crystal or two out every now and then, um, but mostly it's just a deck of cards that you'll see me using. Um, my first... Uh, ritual if you want to call it that is around my shuffling um and most people don't know this um so i've got a way of shuffling cards that that work for me and that feel right for me and it depends on whether the deck is in order or not if the deck's in order then i like to do seven riffle shuffles so to me this is a riffle shuffle seven of them for me completely randomizes a deck um and I might throw a few overhands in the middle of that at random. If however the deck isn't in order and I'm just looking to like, you know, reset it after answering someone's question or something like that, then I'll generally tend to do one riffle. That didn't quite work, but one riffle shuffle. And four kind of a overhand shuffles. and four okay five of ones don't know what that's trying to tell me um the second ritual i've actually forgotten what my second ritual was which is annoying Okay, I had to pause for a stupidly long time there to try and remember what the second ritual that I had in mind was. I actually can't remember what it was I was going to say, which is annoying because I know I definitely had another one. However, another ritual that I do almost daily is, um, it, this is around a daily draw, um, but I often feel that with cards, with some decks more than others, but with a lot of cards, um, they mean that they hit you differently as you look at them through the day. I like the point is I like to um, like display my cards. So I'll take like, my card of the day, or maybe it's three cards of the day, and I'll pop them kind of a uh, on my desk where I can kind of a glance at them occasionally through the day, um, and I'll get different ideas about the card as the day goes on. Um, I, I suppose quite a lot of people tend to do that, but that is one ritual that I do stick to. Um, when I pull my cards of the day, I'll tend to lay them out. Um, and just as I'm working through the day, I'll you know glance over and maybe get new ideas about the card in general, as well as new ideas about what that could mean for my day. So that's the second ritual, and then finally the one is um it's either one piece of advice or one card that you want to try and embody and why so i'm going to go for the one card that i would like to embody and for me that is the king of cups um so i very much view myself as the page of cups and i always strive to be so i the, i see the king of cups as being the he's like the least dickish of all the kings for one um and he's just like, to me, he's a very warm character. He's a very friendly character. He's, he's approachable. He's someone that you would go to for advice, for help, you know. Um, I don't really get many negative views about the King of Cups generally. Um, he's very mature um, and he's got lots of kind of a wise advice to offer people. And I don't think that's me, but it's it's something that I would it's something that I would strive to be. Um, if nothing else, I like to be approachable to people, and I like for people to think that they can come to me, even if it's not for advice, even if it's more for you know just you know someone to listen to them. Um, and 
yeah, the the emotional maturity that the King of Cups embodies is something that I strive for. Um, so yeah, that's why I've chosen the King of Cups. Okay, I will. I'll suss out five channels because I'm I think I'm supposed to tag five channels to now do this. Um, I'll need to check for five channels that haven't done this already because I realise I'm leaving this quite late. <laughs> so I'm conscious that most people will have done this tag now. But I'll find five that haven't done it. I don't think Deanne from Blue Crescent Tarot's done it. So heads up, I'll probably tag Deanne unless I find that she has done it. Um, and I'll find four others and I'll put them in the description. Um, but thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care and I'll hopefully see you all soon. Bye.